J, K, L, M, and N. Give a motion, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so let's hear the public comment cards on 1B. On 1A. On the on 1A, okay. We have Gina Di Pietro and Mr. Herman. Morning. Good morning, LAPD Commission and um, President Soboroff. Um, I've gotten in trouble for getting off topic before, but rest assured, this is on topic. This is about promoting the uh, Valley safety spots that will be in advertising. But please bear with me and don't interrupt. I I, I really ask you that. It this is sound um, good so far. This is um, Police Officers Memorial Day. This is the week where we celebrate police officers for putting their bodies and souls on the line for our safety. And we are grateful and thank you so much. And this is In the Line of Duty by George Hahn. You know what? Why don't I wait, never wait, dreamed wait, 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 it would wait, wait, be wait, me. Wait, wait, wait. Why don't you wait till public comment? Because this really is off Because topic. we never get to public comment, sir. These meetings never last that long. Okay, but this is off topic, so. I'm gonna have to I ask never you to dreamed it would be me, the badge no longer on my chest, my okay. name so for it's, all eternity. It's off topic. I sleep now in eternal rest. Okay, so we'll go to the next speaker. Thanks. Just wait. Place. We'll get to public comment today. Will we? Is that a promise? No. Well, I mean, then why don't you just give me a chance? Being honest. Okay. Thank you. No, I'm not okay. Your, your time's up. My time's up. Next speaker, please. Next speaker, Mr. Herman. This civilian oversight committee has become a farce, and all of us know it here, and it's your Next job speaker, to make please. it better, sir. Please try. All I was trying to do was help promote the safety officers. Okay, I'm going to give you a warning now, then I'm going to ask you to leave the, the room. Um, who's the next speaker on this one? Mr. Herman. Mr. Herman? Yep. Is he here? Oh, I apologize. This puppet is puppet, not Mr. Herman. Are you okay. Good, Good morning, morning, Mr. Mr. Herman. Good morning, Mr. Scornful, sober off. Due to the agenda on 42 U.S.C. 141.41, um, department's report dated May 9th, 2018, relative to the donation of promotional radio sports. That's not item 1A. We're on item 1A. 1A. Radio reports. No, this is regarding travel authority for the chief. Valued at $8,000. No, you must be reading a different agenda. What day? What date? This one was from the back of the room, May 15, 2018, sir. Oh, yeah, well, mine's wrong here. See, maybe you should stick with the program and not throw the poor woman off for yeah, speaking her mind. 42 yeah. USC 1983. We have a March you know, I'm a white man under a dark skin, and you, you, you discriminate against me, you racist. Wait, hold on. We'll start your time over. So we've a we uh, hold on hold on for a second Herman. So we have approved um, items, all except for items what B, one A, and what else? You have approved one B, one B D F and G. Okay. Also, most do we have any comments on H I J K L M? So is this the wrong agenda too? So you handed me another wrong agenda? What did she give you? Uh, I have it. I have it electronically. Okay. 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 So, uh, Mr. Herman, let's start your time over. So now that we're dealing with the value of eight thousand dollars from the Valley Traffic Advisory Council. Can you reset the clock? Yeah. Pardon me. Would you like me to read the report? Oh, thanks. The consent. Well, the consent department's report is dated for May 9th, 2018, dealing with saving lives, car show, and safety fair. Well, before you deal with anyone's safety at a car show, you should deal with the hit and run capital of the world, Los Angeles, because we're notorious for drinking and driving like Jose Weizar got away with back in his days. 
Now, elected officials shouldn't be drinking and driving anyways, the same reason why those two officers were detained in the valley for drinking and driving. Now, mothers against drunk driving, mad, so to speak, should be initiated for the safety of public interest, Mr. Sobarov. But as you know, back in 2018, still saving lives doesn't matter. Hollywood Highland John Walsh is correct. We become the hit and run second. capital of the world. Hold, hold the clock for a second. Now, what's the stop for, clock. Steve? Uh, Mr. Spindler, if you can't control your voice and interrupting the meeting, I'm going to ask you to leave. So that is your final warning, sir. OK. Mr. Sobrov, just Go pay ahead. attention to the speakers at the podium. Leave the audience alone. They're not disruptive. You're disruptive when you intervene Off topic, on my general so public You want to keep comment. going or no? So once again, valley traffic's conditions are unsafe. Just this past week, Mitchell Englander's district of constituents and stakeholders complained about the fast cars driving off of Havenhurst. And what did Englander do to me at the public safety meeting? He had me removed. Before I could even speak, he, he violated the Brown Act and the civil rights and my ability to speak on the safety of lives in the Havenhurst area of the West Valley, District 12. So Mitchell Englander is still a Dibble Dwarf loser. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Oh, uh, uh, let's have a motion. That's it for 1A, right? Yes, sir. Okay, let's have a motion for approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Next up is speaker for what? 1C. Okay. We have Wayne from Encino, and this is relative to a monetary donation in the amount of $1,440. Yes, so my friend has donated his cartridges and his rifle by gunpoint last year. You have four of his cartridges on his vintage AK-47, and he would like this back. So we are withdrawing our donation of rifle cartridges, and we would like them to back from the thieving Jew, son of a bitch, Steve Sobaroff, who stole those items. $8,970 of bullshit. We oppose this fucking gift. It is not a gift. What happened was they have been taking rifle magazines from everybody, and then taking them and writing them off on their taxes and depreciating them, and then giving them to you as a quid pro quo gift. They're not valued at $8,970. They're valued at $99, yes. So they're going to take the $8,970 as a tax donation, as a tax-free gift to your fucking corrupt organization known as RICO. No, it's the Police Foundation. Oh, I'm sorry. The RICO organization known as the Los Angeles Police Donation Foundation, correct? Very good. Yes, and so we want our rifle cartridges back, especially when Mr. Fuhrer prosecutes phony gun charges, such as what he did last year to my friend Mr. Spinner, who successfully caused them to drop the fucking charges. Because there's two reasons why. Number one, when you buy a fucking assault rifle and it's grandfathered, it's not a crime, it's an infraction. And what's the second reason? Because they're fucking stupid Jews. That's right, yes. And so we want our cartridges back. And thank you, Cynthia McLean Hill, for standing up and leaving this meeting in protest of this son of a bitch. Thank you. And we have no other cards for this item. Motion for approval of item number 1C. So moved. Do we have a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now we're in 1E, and we have one common card, Wayne from Encino. This is a donation of Narcan valued at $7,500. So what do we have here? Nax alone hydrochloride. Now what do we need Narcan for? It sounds to me like the police department is making a bomb. Is that what they're doing? Yes. So go ahead, Mr. Puppet. They are making a bomb. Yes, they want the Naxalone hydrochloride, also known as Narcan. And 
And that's because LAPD is constructing their very own bombs. And then they're going to put them in the drones and drop them in South Central as a way to reduce the, the homeless the population. Off topic. off topic, Mr. Spindler, so, or whoever's speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah so stay on the fucking topic, okay? So why do we need Naxalone hydrochlorine? fucking valued at fucking seven thousand five hundred fucking dollars from the fucking los angeles police foundation to be fucking utilized to fucking equip resource fucking enhancement services enforcement team and the hope reach out program is part of a pilot program to decrease mortality rates from opiate overdose so in other words what we're going to do is take people who we accuse of being high on opiates. Yes, they're all high. And when you're high, you create beautiful music and poetry and thoughts. Yes, and then here comes the police to put the Narcan in your veins. And then they knock you and shock you out and you become sober again. When you become sober, you lose your hair and you become a sober off. So don't become a sober off. Use drugs. Fuck this fucking Jew. And Next speaker, please. Um, we have Mr. Herman. Is this the last speaker on this yes, item? Yes, sir. Okay. Are there any other speakers on any of the other um, on consent? consent? That's it, no, huh? sir. That's okay. <coughs> Mr. Chair, uh, what item are we on? We are on item number 1E. Thank you, ma'am, Madam Chair. So you heard, how are we dealing with the opioid? drugs, or any drugs. This issue on homeless outreach and proactive engagement is an issue of general public importance, Mr. Inspector General. The goal of resolving the compliance review and ensuring that I or any person who's homeless prevents you from increasing non-compliance Title II ADA discrimination the way you did to Charlie Africa. Pow, pow. You see, innocent bystanders now sleeping on the sidewalk become a part of your interest just because of what? Donations under the item of nalonoxanine hydrochlorosorine. Well, stemming from the rates of mortality, it shouldn't be important. The same way you gunned down an innocent man for $2 million, pow, pow. He's reaching for my gun. No, he's reaching for hope. Topic, why don't you hop on topic and then we'll, well, you can continue. So since all these issues of general public importance supersede any proactive engagement as hope, my hope is lost that this department fails as a team to participate in Title II of the ADA to protect homeless people with mental health. And Steve Soboroff knows quite well what the hell I'm talking about because it's his gay son that keeps fucking up my world. Off topic. We have no other comment cards on this item. I'll move the item. Second. Give a second. All in favor? Okay. Aye. We're on item number 2A. We have common cards on all items other than 2E. Okay, do we have any commissioner comments on item 2A? I don't think we need reports on 2A, B, B or, or C. C. But I can't. Any commissioners have any other? No. So we can probably go to comments on each of those items. Then. Okay. Yeah, do them so, collectively okay, and then approve them collectively. We have one common card on 2A. We have Wayne from Encino. I'm sorry, two common cards, Wayne and Mr. Herman. And uh, who do you have on B? On B, we have Wayne. Okay. And then Wayne on 2C. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Spindler, you can do uh, A, B, and C. Two minutes each. 
We start with the 2A changing the name of United Road Towing Inc. DBA to Ross Baker to Ross Baker Towing. So this is quite confusing. First, we turned it into Ross Baker, then Baker to Las Vegas Towing, then back to Baker Towing from United Road Towing, AKA DBA, Road Towing, AKA Horseshit Towing, AKA Ross Baker Towing. Topic, uh, Mr. Spindler, whoever. So the fucking director's fucking report that's been dated on May the fucking 10th, 2018, relative to the fucking First Amendment. We're going over to repetitive, fucking repetitive. Contract. So we'll go to uh, uh, one, uh, 2B now. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Let's go now, to 2B. The Los Angeles Police Department has been fucking up again. The professional standards. Yes. Look at that. They like to cut the microphone. Nee, 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 puppet time. Los Angeles Police Department's Pro Standards Bureau Internal Affairs. First of all, can we turn the fucking microphone on? Is that possible? It's been shut off, Mr. Sobarov, for the record. Microphone, yes, microphone, microphone, no microphone. Is your no hand microphone. on the mic? Is your hand on it? No, microphone, yes. Oh, your hand was on it. No, we're not on it. Okay. I, look at my little hands. I'm here. I have okay, little so hands. Okay, so keep going. I have little hands like your gay son, Jake. Yes. So Stop the it. Los Angeles Police Department's unprofessional standards of bullshit. For example, when you arrest a police officer and you accuse somebody of battering a police officer when they're not on duty, that is unprofessional conduct. When somebody dumps ashes on a table. It's off topic, so let's go to, I, you have a, a, also a card in for item number 2C. Huh. So I'll give you two minutes from 2C. So now we go to the agreement between the fascist city of Los Angeles and Westcore Environmental to have maintenance and mining services. Yes, that's because Mr. Beck hired them after last week's little toxic dump allegedly made in the commission meeting, yes. Well, that's off topic. Well, no it's not, because as you know, you accused people falsely of dumping a toxic substance on television. Okay, so that's off topic. Steve okay, Lopez let's in, reported go to the next it. speaker See, on uh, 2A. 2A, we have Mr. Herman and we have Mr. Herman on 2C. Herman, you have 2A and 2C, so we'll give you the collective time. And those are the only speakers on ABC. Yes, we do have um, four speakers on 2D. Okay. Three, four. This is uh, A and C, Mr. Herman. So uh, when parking a police garage for service or official police garage service. What are we referring to here? Well, let's refer to reflecting a name change. There's multiple ways of making a name change, especially when you're a public entity. And let me give you the definition of a public entity as defined by Title II of the ADA 42 USC 12131, number one, of a public entity under 42 USC 12132. But let's let's go with hypothetic names. You know, let's let's rename this garage like um, Spindler Garage. Or how about um, Wakisha Wilson? Mr. President, the speaker's off, off topic. topic. Well, I'm looking for a garage name as indicated on this executive director's report, stating number. 129764 for official police garage services, area 17. And it specifically wants to reflect the name change, and I'm giving you names to change. But apparently, for some reason, due to the bias and decision making of criticism here, it seems that we're not united for road towing incorporation. Maybe we should bid for a, a better bidder in, in the towing business. After all, I am looking for a job, and I would probably Off do a topic, good service. So now you towing. have a, you also have a card in on number C, I think two C. Yes. So you can go ahead to two C. Well, 
Regarding this is dealing with the department's report to transmit what our fucking mayor and the fucking city council have neglected for years, which is how to deal with the Los Angeles Police Department with fucking lead maintenance and fucking mining services. The speaker's being repetitive, Mr. President, not speaking to the topic. Okay. Last, I am specifically warning. talking about a public entity, sir. Go ahead. Last a municipal warning. corporation called the mayor and the city of Los Angeles, for the record. That is what the hell I'm talking about, Mr. T. Fank. I'm not talking about the Spearmint Rhino. I'm not talking about our dealings Off with Off topic. Lap okay, so um, I'm dealing a specifically for, with. I will move. A motion items for approval to, of A and C. I will move items to A, B, B and C. C. Do we have a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're going to item number 2D. I think we should hear this report. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is the department's report dated May 9th, 2018, relative to homelessness and mental illness on the Metropolitan Transportation Authority system. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Good morning, Commissioner Shobaroff, Commission, Morning, Chief of Police, and Deputy Chief Bob Green, representing the Transit Services Bureau. With me is Jennifer Lowe representing the Metropolitan, the uh, MTA. And I have two representatives from PATH, Mr. Stephen Fitcher and Karen Barnes. Responding to your questions you may have. Thanks for coming. Here. So in response to the public safety uh, um, and Councilman Mar Nuri Martinez, he put together a, a response on everything that MTA is currently doing in the way of homelessness mental health can you, and can you yeah, move uh, slide the mic over a little bit homelessness mental health on the transit system so since july 1st uh, of last year we became the primary provider as you know for uh, transit policing and one of our most significant challenges turned out to be the number of folks that are suffering from mental illness that are on the system the number of homeless people that are on the system that actually use it for housing off hours um, we've done a, a number of things that are laid out in our 15 do that I can go into in de to detail. But first, I'd like you to hear from Jennifer and then the folks from PATH and the things that uh, they're currently doing to, to help us with the challenge of homelessness. Great. Thank you, Jennifer. Absolutely, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, discuss these matters with the board. We have uh, at Metro have clearly been um, impacted by the countywide uh, homeless crisis with 58,000 people who are homeless in LA County. And uh, we have found that uh, the homeless population at times is, is quite desperate looking for alternative shelter um, on our, our, tr our transit lines, whether it be bus or rail. And uh, to proactively address that issue, we, um, we have uh, employed our own outreach teams, our own homeless outreach teams in partnership with PATH who work under the Department of Health Services at LA County. And uh, the results are, are quite successful, contacting about 2,500 uh, homeless individuals on the rail red line alone between the hours of 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. And they've been uh, successfully able to place about 12% of those individuals into permanent housing. We look forward to bringing additional uh, opportunity for expansion. I'll let them also describe some of the work that they do. Uh, we are uh, proposing an expansion of uh, what was a pilot program at our board uh, later this week to um, expand the number of teams from two to eight teams, operating from five days a week now to seven days a week. Good. Great. Thanks. I'm Steve Victor from PATH, and it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, Steve, speak into the mic, yeah. Thank you. I'll I'll do that. Um, we have um, two teams um, from PATH currently running on the red line, uh, multidisciplinary teams that consist of mental health specialists, um, outreach specialists, um, physical um, health uh, specialists, as well as substance abuse specialists, um, who engage um, long-term engagement um, process with those who are experiencing homelessness, who are currently riding on the red line. And as Jennifer mentioned, a pilot. Hold on for a sec. Sure. Herman, are you trying to disrupt the meeting, or are you just doing it? Yes, sir. Just answer. It's your last warning. Okay. 
Thank you. So as Jennifer mentioned, the teams have been very successful in reaching out to over 2,000 individuals who are experiencing homelessness um, on the red line alone, and that's why we're in conversation about expanding that um, process. Um, one of the um, successes that we've seen also in our processes is, is the engagement and um, partnership with Metro Security and also the LAPD. Um, through um, Officer Padilla and his team who are, who are working hard to also address the issues. Um, we're partnering to be the engagement and, if you will, the heart that reach out, out, reaches out to folks as they're um, experiencing um, the challenges of being homeless in the city of Los Angeles, um, uh, perhaps experiencing some severe mental health challenges, physical health challenges, um, decades-long homelessness on the, um, and on riding on the system. Many of the folks that we are encountering in, um, on the red line in the system are those who are um, more disengaged um, with um, the processes and the systems and the supports than other people we find elsewhere in the city um, in encampments and um, simply in tents on the side of the street. So I just wanted to um, thank you all for Appreciate the support it. that we have in this work. And I don't know if Karen has anything to add. Karen? She, she's the boots on the ground person. <laughs> um, I just say can echo everything that Steve said. Um, I do want to say that it's really been a pleasure for us to work with Sergeant Padilla and his team. And the connection that we've had with LAPD on this particular project has been amazing. And they've been extremely supportive, and we've been very happy with it. Great. Thank you. So, so what I like to kind of paint a picture of what we've done. Uh, when we first started the system, we had a, a part-time HOPE officers on overtime. It didn't work out because there was no... Uh, investment. So I pulled a, a full-time supervisor in, Sergeant Mike Padilla, who they continue to, to reference. Uh, and Mike has done a, an, a, an unbelievable job. He was the first HOPE sergeant in the city at Valley Bureau. And we brought him down to transit to try and address it. Since then, we've taken our special problems unit. We've turned that into a full-time HOPE detail of four. We supplement that with seven officers a day on overtime, one of those being assigned to MEU. And so proactively, we're trying to put folks from MEU with that special training on to supplement everything we're doing uh, with the C3 teams and now C6 teams to do proactive outreach. As in, uh, in the transportation system, the critical piece that we have is that when officers or the community members engage with folks who are mentally or homeless on the street, there's lots of room. They can give them space. On the transit system, we don't have that. On buses or trains, when someone's in crisis, folks are forced into a very, very compact environment. Mm -hmm. And officers, you know, they, they can ride from stop to stop, but eventually, if that individual is still in crisis and making everybody on that bus or train uncomfortable, they have to be removed from the train, which has led to uh, with plenty of de-escalation. I mean, my officers, we hit de-escalation at every single roll call on every watch. It's the topic that we focus on because of the system. They ride from stop to stop with individuals trying to de-escalate it. But eventually, when they have to come off the train, they have to go hands on. Uh, and that puts our officers in a really, really difficult position on the system. And so we're trying to do everything we can to reduce the use of force numbers. And we've done that um, with engaging vigorously with as many providers as we can to get folks off the system. As you all know that uh, we have many more folks that are in need of services, either for mental health or for homeless than we can provide. So right now, uh, our HOPE team, Monday through Thursday for the most part, during day watch hours because that's when the service providers are available and we're going to start to see that change it looks like and so as that changes we will readjust our hours and you'll see on the, the next topic uh, next year MTA has uh, offered to provide a full-time hope service it would be one sergeant and 10 additional officers because I think we've got we're modeling everything identically to the, the hope team in the rest of the city of Los Angeles and work with Commander Choi to make sure that we've coordinated but because we're a city county you know entity that we get to work in, in all environments there are many more services that we can pull mm -hmm. in outside of the city now, one of our challenges has been trying to, to come up with a uh, a cleanup protocol that mirrors the city for mta in the county and bringing county cleanup resources in and private resource to clean up the encampments so we've made a lot of progress in that area and we're continuing to, to build partnerships we recently had a a meeting with the county and we're gonna try a uh, trial project, bringing in mental health providers working with our teams to go out and ride the system to get additional folks that are experts and clinicians so that we can get on the front end of this when folks are in crisis so we don't have to put hands on or respond to radio calls after the fact. Good. So just based on the numbers, it's a great opportunity for us to focus the resources, you okay. know, because uh, folks are there every morning. Um, I think from the rider 
perspective, folks don't like to write in that environment. And so um, our challenge is, is getting folks off the system. We average about 120 people a day when those trains stop that we have to remove from the system that would love to stay on them, but the trains have got to be cleaned. And so that's uh, done with a lot of finesse, getting people off the trains and out of Union Station so we don't end up with use of force or arrests. And the officers have done a, a very, very admirable job getting that done. The next piece of this is, is sexual harassment. And I can go into tremendous detail, but as you read through the report, you can see we made really dramatic improvements in the numbers of sexual harassment crimes and also complaints that come in um, to the MTA. And so most of that is done by that high visibility presence. Those cops are on those trains and stations for nine and a half hours. We have an overlap. They roll call on the platforms. So our whole goal is high visibility prevention. And that seems to be working. The, the feedback we've got from MTA uh, has been very, very supportive of the, the plan. And you'll see as we talk about the budget and the next item that we're, we're trying to identify things we didn't quite get right based on that first contract amendment. And they've been extraordinarily uh, generous at making shifts with us so we can even better the model. So with that, I'm open to any questions. I can go on for- Commissioners, questions, comments? Okay. Thank you so much for that report. Um, I want to just commend you for the significant decrease in sexual assault and harassment complaints and incidents. Um, it's really extraordinary work there. Um, and wanted to dive in a little bit more deeply to the um, issues related to people experiencing homelessness and mental illness. And thank you to PATH for coming on short notice. Appreciate you being here. Um, you know, first of all, I, I understand this is the first of its first sort of partnership between, uh, in terms of having homeless outreach workers on trains in the nation, is that true? Um, no? No, it's okay. not. Um, but it's the best it's, one, <laughs> it's, It is um, <laughs> the most robust okay. um, outreach uh, that we have seen in the transportation okay, industry. Right. And, and in fact, the um, a model that's moving forward on how outreach can be paired with law enforcement while protecting the rights of the homeless at the same time. Okay, great. So th I would love to hear more specifically about that in terms of how you are coordinating with law enforcement from both the law enforcement perspective and the outreach perspective and how that's working, what you're learning about how that works, particularly in the uni unique environment of a train. Um, sure. So every morning at 7 a.m. we meet in the lobby of the Metro headquarters. The LAPD sends a representative to meet with us so they're able to communicate what they've seen the night before, give us contact information for anyone that they've encountered that might be willing to accept outreach services, and they're also able to help us. So if we have a safety concern, someone we feel might need, need to be evaluated for mental health reasons, that sort of a thing, or we want accompaniment to something, they've been very willing to help us with that also. Um, we're also in touch by phone, so... Sergeant Padilla and I text or call each other when we need anything. <laughs> and we've able, been able to stay in contact and to help each other out. And so how do you coordinate in terms of deciding, at, you know, if at what point you bring in law enforcement in a particular situation? Uh, for us, primarily, I think it's been generally when we, we think someone might qualify for a 5150. We haven't had too many safety concerns where we've needed to call police for backup. Um, so it's primarily been for those sorts of reasons that we've reached out. Okay. And what about the other way around? If, if law enforcement's interacting with people experiencing homelessness, at what point do they engage the outreach folks? So I was going to touch on that, Commissioner, because there's so many more police officers. Generally, we identify the behavior in the individuals and, and reach out. Mike does that by phone. We look at data, you know, most of the data and the, the radio calls that we get on the red line, the purple line downtown. So we really look at the data for our deployment. Mike looks at the encampment piece, and then we reach out, coordinate with whether entity he has. The, the thing that he had done very brilliantly is build relationships outside of law enforcement in the county and MTAs to other service providers. And so he's got all those numbers on speed dial. Uh, many a times he's identified families in the middle of the night that need housing, and uh, Mike starts speed dial. You know, the watch commander will call him and Mike will pick the phone up and start working speed dial to get somebody placed. We can't always do that, but there's a, n a number of phenomenal stories of just the, the humanity that these folks have displayed getting people off the street. Uh, but the frustration is just a lack of resources, right. you know, and those will come. I, I think one of the, the things that's worked really well, and I'd like to compliment Chief Kamala, she and I partnered a while ago to, to use the folks from MEU. And just since September, um, their folks, you know, two bodies a day, 664 contacts. They've placed 26 holds, and our folks have reached out for sport teams uh, 211 different times, which is 
resulted in 61 placements. And so that piece is working really well, trying to get the MEU resources and the, uh, the other service providers engaged. And so it's helped quite a bit. Um, and are you contemplating expanding beyond just the red line? Expa I'm sorry, expanding what? Expanding beyond the red line? Yeah. So part of it is resources. As soon as we, we get into the next budget cycle, and we're able to expand our whole piece. The success of that whole piece will only be if we can get sanitation and resource providers to help us. And that's why we're doing really aggressive outreach now with the Department of Mental Health to see if we can get their staffing. And it seems like they're, we're going to get a commitment from them. Mm -hmm. So as we bring on uh, those other service providers, we'll be able to expand hope and get off just the red and the purple line. But data is going to drive what we do every day. You know, our, our morning watch folks really get a good sense of who's where on the system and where they're trying to get on the system. And because a lot of those trains end up at Union Station, that's a heavy lift every morning to try and get them out of Union Station. Um, the other thing we experience is, is we put officers on both sides of the gold line as trains come into the city in the morning. And I think the, the first day we counted 38 on the, the first couple of trains, and the next day 42, Mike, I believe, of folks that are just coming in from outside the city into the downtown area to resources. And so it's, that's a challenge, too. And so we're, we're now working with Jennifer and the multi-agencies around us to see what we can do on those, those other platforms outside of the city to either direct folks to local resources or to do fair checks or whatever we can. Okay. One of the, the things that we found is uh, the Sheriff's Department they release three to 400 people a day, and they take in three to 400 people a day. Anybody that's currently being treated for mental health issues is given a tap card to get in the system. And so it's all well intended, but what it does, it puts somebody that many times ends up on mental health meds or in crisis on a really, really congested, compacted transportation device. Um, and, and that creates a challenge I talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to work with them to see if there's some alternatives to public transportation. Mm. Can I and also about, oh, just add a quick sure. comment to that? In terms of the framework under the pilot program, that's even born fruit, if you will, beyond that. On New Year's Day, anecdotally, I got a call from an officer who was working with someone who had been on the expo line, and there were no resources open at that mm. time, and PATH was able to engage the resources that we have connections with beyond um, this specific program to help those people get into a shelter that night. So I think it was a motel voucher. But. And about how many encounters, on average, does it take before someone agrees to go into housing oh, that depends. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of variance in that. So, I mean, some people, you know, like, like Steve was saying, that the type of people that we have riding the metro system are people who generally don't want to be in the encampments and don't want to be in the, sort of the traditional placements for homeless people. So they may not have connections with other resources like most people that we would meet on the street who are already engaged with programs. So sometimes we're meeting people who are hearing about this for the first time or who are newly homeless and they just got on the train because it was a safe place and didn't know what to do and they're not part of the larger homeless community or wanting to be around that. So sometimes with those people, they're willing to go immediately. And then we have other people who have been on the system for years, and it could take years of engagement with, with someone like that to try to build the trust and the rapport to convince them to go inside. So it really varies. I think so, some of our challenges, if you identify an individual that, that is ready for help, and uh, Sergeant Padilla tries to get them help through the different resources, there's nothing available. And, and some of the things that Commander Choi is now doing with the homeless CP will help us resolve that so we can identify you know, where Bob Green is day to day. And once we identify resources, we can go back and find him. Because right now, if, if he's not ready to go, or if he is ready to go on the resources there, then we gotta find him again. And uh, on the transit system, folks are constantly mobile. So a lot of the new things that Commander Choi has put together will really uh, breathe some life into our being able to track folks. Commissioner McLean Hill. Provide services. Um, I'm just, uh, you know, I, I appreciate everybody being here today, and it's, uh, uh, I'm interested um, having read the report and also uh, having watched sort of um, the issues relative to homelessness um, being played out from an MTA perspective mm -hmm. in the press. I'm, I'm just, I'm very interested in understanding how um, because uh, Chief Green, as you talk about resources, um, you know, sort of who is, is principally responsible for coordinating the resources and providing the resources to achieve the objectives that MTA has set for um, service on its trains? Because at the end of the day, this is an MTA 
uh, it's a contract with MTA de designed to meet certain particular goals of the transit system. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying, I, I'd like to understand MTA's role in um, driving, providing resources, coordinating resources, um, mm -hmm. because I'm always concerned about the degree to which LAPD you know, becomes default responsible <laughs> for achieving a myriad of objectives mm -hmm. that it is simply not equipped to achieve. Yes, and um, that's a really poignant question. And I think what you're doing is you're identifying um, an elephant in the room in the homeless arena. Um, it, it, being that there are 58,000 people who are homeless in LA County, um, the issue has become everybody's issue. Um, and Metro is no exception to that. Now, I think um, we've done a pretty decent job on, on lobbying the county to receive um, outreach support, which we have under Measure H, E6 strategies. We will receive 40 personnel through uh, that outreach component. Now they'll spend a portion of their time on government properties, including ours. It would be shared with beaches, harbors, parks, libraries, and whatnot. Um, uh, we are investing in the matter, and we have um, committed quite a, a big dollar value, starting with $1.2 million, and we're later, um, under the proposal this week, going to expand our investment to about $4.5 million. We will assess it on an annual basis. What we're looking to do is um, essentially fill a void that exists on homeless services, being that the demand is so much higher than what the resources can provide. And that's why our investment, um, and, and I would imagine our investment with LAPD as well on this issue, um, not our investment in LAPD overall, but we'll have to assess these issues and the investment on an annual basis, um, being that the homeless um, arena is continually changing in terms of services, housing support, outreach support staff, and whatnot. So um, this is an ever-changing issue, and we are currently filling the, filling the void. Commissioner, I think the complexities of it is because the system winds through the city of Los Angeles, the county. It's on MTA property through Culver City, Santa Monica, through South Pasadena, and on, 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 on. Every Monday we meet, and one of the topics on that agenda is, is homelessness and uh, whether or not county council and the city attorney are talking about cleanup protocols and things like that. And so the the success so far has been relationships and then sharing resources. So it's just not dependent on LAPD or the Department of Sanitation. Uh, we're pushing county entities and private entities that are funded through MTA into those cleanups to get more done quicker. And so at the end of the day, like, like as you all know, it's, it's all about the relationship piece. And that's why I, uh, I compliment the MTA. They've been a great partner. Mike Padilla has been uh, just unbelievable at building those relationships outside the department. No, no I certainly appreciate that, and, I, and I'm and, and pleased to know that um, everyone is, is stepping up and working aggressively to address this particular element of, <coughs> of um, seeking to manage the impacts of homelessness as uh, the civic structure, uh, you know, arrives at a place where it can actually accommodate and house those who are homeless. Um, it's just that when I look at numbers like, you know, 60 to 120 people that, um, that LAPD officers are having to physically remove from, um, from, from trains or buses a day, <coughs> you know, that just, you know, speaks to the uh, potential for outcomes that that are less than optimum pretty significantly and um, and so it's just important to me uh, and I think uh, to this to this commission and to this department that we recognize that these officers are being asked to do something pretty <laughs> you know they're being asked to to step into a breach one that th is not of their making and to be successful, they are going to require, to your point, significant investment in resources that, um, that, that, that can help them do the job that, as a society, we all want done. Mm -hmm. And so while, uh, Chief Green, I am always uh, impressed and, um, and uh, supportive of your, 
uh, very proactive attitude and willingness to step up to the responsibility and this department's willingness to step up to the challenge. You know, I just think it's important to note that this is, uh, that this is a challenge that requires significant commitment and partnership and resources and they're coming, but they've got to come faster. As long, as long as you're here, do you want to go ahead and do your report on the uh, on E on the budgetary adjustment? I can. You folks are. Thank Welcome you. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. But yeah, we, but we're going to we vote on D. Even we're not going to vote. We'll take then. We'll take the speakers. But yeah, go ahead. So as you know, uh, when we started on July 1st, we immediately started to look at um, what we could not have projected in the RFP for the contract. Um, I couldn't be more pleased with MTA's partnership in assessing what we need in a partnering with it. And so ultimately, what we have done is they, they are going to work with us for another $35.3 million in staffing, uh, not just full-time, but overtime officers. And so I'll go through that uh, piece by piece so you understand a little bit better. Some of this was forecast in the way of bomb canine. It was very complex. So do you want me to go through it? Or I mean, we've all looked at, at the portions. Does anyone have questions about the specific line items? Well, I think My question. My questions the, are more. The, hi, the, the highlights. Yeah. Okay. So and anything that you didn't get that you asked for? No. Okay. No. Okay, good. So ultimately, the, the the audit unit was really important because the fiscal operations division is overwhelmed with the overtime pace, and so that will help streamline and okay. make sure that we get so through the IG inspections. The highlights. The, the bomb canine pace was a pace that we could not deal with with the initial RFP. That's been worked out this year. We'll get a sergeant and three uh, canine handlers. Next year, we'll get a sergeant and three canine handlers. And uh, the third year, we'll get four. That's so that con Sheriff's Department can transition out and that we won't lose the expertise on the system for, for three years. The enhanced staffing on Watch 3, that's strictly focused on the homeless piece. Right now, we've got two officers on each line. Anytime they get a body in custody, the line has no policing. So we're gonna double staffing on Morning Watch. That'll help with closures and keeping folks off the system. Uh, additional expenses, things we didn't forecast, uh, premium MOU pay, in some re, uh, increase in reserved overtime. And so it's all focused on just keeping us fiscally sound and giving us a, the resources that we need for next year. So ultimately, we'll add a total of 23 positions. Eight of those are civilian positions, and 15 are our sworn positions, 10 of those being HOPE, three being um, or four being uh, the canine unit and the final position, we, we actually attrited two positions out, a lieutenant position and a P3 position and, and replaced those with civilian staffing. Okay, uh, any questions or comments, commissioners on this portion? Uh, mm -hmm. Do we have, um, are there any public comments on E? We have one card on E and 10 on uh, D. Okay, let's do E first, please. We have Wayne from Encino on E. So, as you can see, what's happening here with the MTA contract is a failure. The LAPD's contract is a failure. See, we go, me and my puppet and other puppets, we go on the metro, and we don't see many cops. We used to see sheriffs. They used to be around there all the time. Very nice people. You know, can I see your tap card? Yes, thank you. But not these armed bandits. No, in the morning at the metro station, as soon as they see the Latinos and the blacks go down that chute, down into that train, they start checking all the tap cards with this little monitor. And as soon as people forget to pay or accidentally they tap and the thing doesn't go through, there's LAPD writing them expensive tickets for failure to have a fare while riding. They have aggressively done that, but they're doing something else very special, which I got a ticket for. They're going into the parking lot where you're paying $3 to park over at the uh, North Hollywood and then the one over in, uh, in uh, the Rich Jew area, what's that, by Studio City, Universal Studios. And they ticket your car $100, 
if you don't have a front license plate, even though you have valid registration on your cars. That's what these LAPD motherfuckers are doing right now. You're they're going topic. into parking lots. We're talking lots. about the budgetary adjustment? That's what they're doing. They're budgetarily adjusting themselves by writing excessive levels of tickets on cars parked in the lot, paying $3 a day to park, a hundred fucking dollars for not having a front license plate displayed on your car. These people are fucking psychopaths. They're attacking and decreasing the ridership on Metro. So you need to get the LAPD, like ICE, the fuck out of the Metro stations. Get these cocksuckers out of the fucking Metro stations. Can we have a motion for approval? On, uh, it's, the approval is to uh, approve the department's report and transmit to mayor and city council. Motion, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, anyone opposed? Okay, let's go. Thank you, Edwin. You're welcome. Okay, let's go back to D and we'll take the uh, comment. You said you had 10 comment I cards on item number. I believe I have 11, sir. 11 on 2D? Yes. The first three Michael Novick, Pete White, and General Jeff. Mr. Novick, thank you for coming. Uh, because it, it clarifies what the whole thing is about. Uh, the uh, LAPD lowballed the uh, Sheriff's Department to get the contract on uh, 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 policing the uh, uh, subways and buses inside Los Angeles, and now they're coming back for $35 million more. You could solve the problem of homelessness in the city of Los Angeles if you took all the money that the LAPD is uh, stealing from the city budget, and on top of it, and that they're now stealing money from the budget of the Metropolitan Transportation Authority, and on top of the money they get from the city of Los Angeles, and use that to provide homeless services and housing. But you're not going to do that. You're going to uh, 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 toil and moil and, and come up with uh, you know phony solutions. The, the officer uh, told you what the problem is. There are many, many more police on the trains than any uh, members of these so-called outreach teams. And therefore, you're dealing with it as a policing problem. In, in this report, uh, on, on your agenda, you capitalize homelessness and you capitalize mental illness. It's kind of bizarre, but that's what the city is doing. The city is making capital out of homeless people and out of mental illness. And so until you deal with that problem, you're not going to solve it by putting more police on the trains. I ride the trains every day. I gave my car away five years ago, and I, I ride the bus and I ride the trains. And most of the people on the buses especially are people of color. They're black and brown people. And the police on those buses and trains that you just talked about, they, uh, you're talking about double shifting now so you can, uh, you can pull somebody off. You, you, you said it, uh, Ms. McLean Hill, uh, 120 people a day, that's 40,000 people a year being pulled off the buses and trains by the LAPD. So that's your problem right there. Pete White, L.A. Can. It's interesting. Sure. There's never questions. 2,500 contacts, 12% into permanent housing. No one asked, where's that housing at? In the city of Los Angeles, we're building 300 units of permanent uh, supportive housing annually. We're in need of 550,000 units of housing at 30 to 50% uh, percent of median area income. You never asked, where's that housing that you're placing people in? Because that was bullshit. They're not placing people into fucking housing. Um, they also sat up here and said, and they're gone. We're running into more disengaged people than into encamp and, and, and let me see, we find more disengaged people than in encampments. Really? Based on what? Right? Based on because they sat here and said that more disengaged, more disengaged from services that aren't available. 60 to 100 people being removed a day is a death sentence for many, particularly when we're talking about the LAPD who we, we, we see the police commission saw that Charlie Africa's death was okay. We saw the police chief said Charlie uh, Africa's death was okay by standard and virtue of your systems. We saw the district attorney said by our systems, Charlie Africa's death was okay. But then a jury of civilians, many like the civilians you are supposed to be found within hours that they were liable for his death. And so we're suggesting that 60 to 100 people a day aren't in harm's way. Of course they're in harm's way. And then I listened to this police officer talk about them. 
those people, they, we got to get them off the trains. We're, there's going to be force. There's going to be some use of force, but we're trying to reduce it. He never said we're going to not have use of force. He was like, there's going to be hands on. There's going to be hands-on. If there's going to be hands-on, there's going to be hands-on batons. There's going to be hands-on pistols. And there's going to be bodies in the train. Ask some fucking questions. Thanks, Pete. Next. General Jeff. Jeff. Morning, Good sir. morning, Commission. Test, test, test. Good morning, Commission. General Jeff from Skid Row. Um, th um, this is a feeble rollout of some type of report. I'm not even clear on exactly what they were hoping to accomplish. Um, those of us that are experts in this field, I don't know what that was up there. Anybody that knows how insensitive you know, this was, I mean, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. I mean, if they really were concerned about mental health, um, they would make some type of mention of that. As far as the plan, the so-called report, um, the interactions of what they're talking about with the officers, um, I would hope that they would have body cameras so that could be reviewed because we saw the outcome, as Pete White mentioned, uh, Brother Africa's death in Skid Row in broad daylight, how officers interact with folks that are mentally ill. So what are we going to have bullets flying all over on, on, on subway stations with, with jeopardizing the, the public safety? So that's, we already know that that, that, uh, uh, that technique isn't working. Um, PATH. I don't know who, who where, was there an RFP issue to select them, you know, C3E6. My whole thing is they, they presented and said, oh, the time that they're out there is when it's convenient for them, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Anybody that knows homeless people ride the subways at night so they can sleep on the train. You need your outreach teams out there. How are you going to have any kind of, show any kind of signs of success if you're not even on the, on the subways when the people are in, in, that in most need are riding? So, so that doesn't even make sense. You know, if you're going to have two teams to uh, act like you're addressing something. Two teams in the entire system of, uh, on the red line, uh, it doesn't make sense. What kind of a rollout is